Hi everybody and welcome to the video. I'll be showing you how to make a game ready asset in Blender and Marmoset Toolbag 4. Now where do we want these holes? We can, they can be in the middle or slightly off the middle. Like that. If you wanted to, you could do it here as well, in this region here, which is also good. In fact, I might just do that actually. Heck, let's do that. So I'm going to select these four faces. And with those selected, we can do uh, inset I to inset that. And you get this funky window being created. First of all, I'm going to delete these faces. We don't need them. That's our hole. And I'm going to switch to edge mode two on the keyboard numbers there and with this edge loop selected by holding down alt and clicking we can use loop tools again because that has a circle function there let's see what happens if we, if we click that now it has the, created a circle but it's also rotated it at an angle which isn't too bad um, you could try and mess around with these options here that's made it a little bit smaller to fit inside, hence the uh, the word there. That's, that's a pretty good size hole, actually. Um, so we'll leave that on fit inside. So we're gonna right click and subdivide these edges. If we switch to vertex mode, you can see we've got, up here I've turned on statistics. Oops. We've got 16 vertices. So now I've got this, we can use loop tools again to make that into a perfect circle. Like that, and that's looking really nice. Now, I'm not going to worry about rotating this again, trying to match up the edges because we have n-gons, remember? We still need to tidy this up a lot. So for now, we can then maybe switch to the knife tool and let's make a cut from there to there to there. Let's continue all the way around like this. Isn't this fun watching me doing this? Oh, did I click in the wrong place there? Maybe. And then once we've done that, right click, enter. Hey, I did, look at that, I made a right mess. But that's okay, because I'm human, I make mistakes. So let's select these three vertices now. If you miss stuff like this, if you don't check as you go along, you're basically gonna come across problems later and be like scratching your head. Why isn't it working, what's going on? Well, check your work, man. Let's select these three. Press M to merge at center. Woohoo! Perfect. And then we've got this lovely star shape. And you can see that our topology or, or our edges, our edge flow is almost working. And that's probably fine because it is going to be a flat surface. So it'd be absolutely fine like that. If you want to optimize this, um, you can do. And we don't need. This one we can't move there. Oh, I've got two again. Oh, look at that. Theo, check your work, dude. Um, what I should do is just select everything. And I'm going to use this handy, nifty, oh, look at that, merge by distance on the add-on. <clears throat> Link in the description. Um, click that. <clears throat> and we've got zero vertices removed. Well, that's rubbish. Well, it's not because the tolerance is too low. Let's make that one there we still have zero so again very small tolerance let's make that one there yay we got rid of one vertex and it's that one right there look at that are you impressed or what um, if you don't have the add-on shame on you um, just select everything press M merge by distance I'm only kidding there's no shame in not having it right let's optimize this a bit more we can bring this vertex as I was saying over there and many ways to do this I won't bore you let's select that one select this one press M merge at last and before we do anything else let's make the other holes before we commit to tidying up optimizing our topology and I might put three or four so 
I'm not going to show you all of that again, but just know that I did the same thing as I just did. Okay, welcome back. So I've made three holes. You can see they're progressively smaller as they go along. Now, I have a confession to make. I did this wrong. And what, I done, what did I do? I kind of hinted at earlier. I should have added three loop cuts along here because I wanted to use the middle polygons to place the, uh, the holes, not so much near the top of this. So we could go back and fix this. Um, I don't know if I will do that. Let me just have a quick think. A few minutes later. Right, that, that took a while, that took a hot minute, didn't it? But the result is pretty good. Um, I'm happy with that. And now our holes are in a much better place. So with that done, we can add some thickness to this now. So what I would do, let's make sure we save. And I've just noticed that it says apply rotation there, which is in red. Because my add-on will, you know, not warn you, but it highlights, If I, like for example, if I scale this up, you can see that is now red. Let me undo that. What I'm getting at is apply the rotation. So I'm just going to hit that. Now to add the thickness, I'm going to add a mirror modifier. At the moment, it's sitting bang on dead center of the world. So there's no thick. Now, if we even with a mirror modifier, if I want to mirror this on the Y axis, which I do, I'll select the Y. I'll select object here, and I add the mirror modifier. It nothing changes. It's still paper thin, right, razor thin. So the only way that's going to work, there's a reason why I didn't turn on clipping, because that wouldn't allow us to do what I want to do next. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, select everything by pressing the A key. Let's select that or press G, Y. So I'm going to move these along the Y axis like that. So now we have a thickness. So the idea here is for me to move these in towards that center line there, but clearly you can see there's some distortion here because of these triangles where the, the damage is. So let's undo that. And for now, let's turn clipping on. And what I'm going to do is press, hold down control and press the plus key on the numpad. That will grow the selection by one. So I'm gonna hit three on my numpad now and go to the side view. And you can see that our line there is the axis along the y-axis, the, the divider I should say along the y-axis. So if I now move these in, something like that, and that keeps these nice and straight because if we distort that, as you saw, it makes a bit of a mess. With that done, let's click on this edge here, hold down control to select the shortest path along that bit there. I'm just going to collapse this a little bit so you get a bit more space like that. 
and go back to the front view, uh, the side view again with three on the numpad. And let's just move that in so we get an ever so slight curve just there. So the next part is just to fill in these these gaps that we have around the object and tidy up the part where we have the the handle being attached to the metallic area. Let's start off with the holes because they're pretty easy to do. Right, so we're still in edge mode, remember. Hold down Alt and click that. Let's do the same for this one here. So Shift Alt now. And select these edge loops. And with those selected, I'm gonna press E to extrude, and then Y for the Y axis, and just drag them like that. And it will clip, obviously, in the middle, because we have clipping on. And we could shade smooth this and see what happens. Nasty. Let's do shade auto smooth. And that's a bit better, but we still have this kind of weird thing going on there. And that's because the um oops, where is it? Old habits die hard, right? Is it auto smooth by angle? But basically we're gonna increase or decrease this angle to refine that. So you can carry on until you see that disappear there. So that's let's call that 33. However, I quite like this um, sharp edge that we had there. So let's tab into edit mode and let's select these edges here. So click the first one, hold down control, click the last one and we have that selection now. And with that done, we're gonna right click and do mark sharp. And that turns this line or these edges, I should say, into like an aqua blue green color thingy. Go to object mode and look at that lovely piece of sharp lines going on there. That was terrible English, I do apologize. Right, so that's good, we like that. And I'm gonna turn on the wireframe again because I'd like to see what I'm working with. And if you don't have the add-on, it's up here, somewhere, there, there we go. Um, right, so we've filled the holes. Let's do the rest now. Let's fill in all the other parts we can see there. And you can imagine, that's going to be quite simple in that we just go back to edit mode and select all of the outer edges like this. Let's do the same for all of these actually for now. So hold down Alt Shift to select more than one and grow a selection like that. And to make sure we haven't missed anything, I'm just going to click on the wireframe viewport shading there just so I can see that nice yellow highlight is actually complete. Switch back to solid mode and same as before I'm going to press the E key followed by the Y key for the Y axis and move that along and it will snap very nicely into the center like so. And that's all well and good but we're not quite done yet so I'm going to select the center edge again that goes all the way around of course like, like so but we're not going to select the ones here and the reason for that is because we don't want this to extrude outwards in, you know and get in the way of the handle so I'm gonna hold down the shift key and deselect just these edges oops like that and with those done now you could be tempted to press the scale key so s and scale these like that but you can see it kind of goes a bit weird over here and over here and over here, in fact, many places. Let's undo that. And instead, I'm gonna select those, which I have, make a bit more space. And instead of S for scale, let's click Alt S, and that will scale along the normals. So Alt S, and I'm gonna move my mouse, hold down Shift, and we can do that. Now we can see there, we're still getting a little bit of distortion there. Okay, so look out for spaces like this where you've got some overlap. Let's bring this down. We'll fix that manually as well, actually. So let's bring that out a little bit like that. That's probably quite cool to start off with. And we'll come back and fix these. And let's fix these ones here because we've kind of broken this one a little bit. So I'm going to switch to vertex mode and select this one here. Now what ideally, ideally what I want to do is move this along so it's flush with this angle there. Um, 
So I can press G twice and slide that along and eyeball it, something like that. That's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> Move that a little bit more. Now I can't slide it back that way. You notice it's going this way, but I can't put it back to where it was over there because we're hitting the boundary of that edge. Now, that's fine because we can actually press the C key um, whilst we're over this side of the of the vertex, okay? If you're over this way, click the C key and you can see that now extends across into the no man's land. So I'm just gonna click, click it there and that's pretty cool. So to do that again over here, so select that vertex, press GG and it will slide along that edge. And again, I'll, I'll just put it too far over here. So if I press GG now, it doesn't go any further. Okay, but if I push, push it over this way and then press the C key, that will. Could it be that the C key stands for catapult? It could be. GG, I'm just going to hold down the shift key and make that as flush as I can. And that's pretty cool. Let's switch to solid mode. So that's kind of the, the look you want to go for at this point. Okay. The other thing we can do is we can make more of this uh, stunted top and front area. So what I mean by that is, you know, we expect the blade to be quite sharp, obviously, very sharp. So this is actually pretty good at the bottom there. We'll come and fix that in a second. But this bit here is quite stubby, it's quite blunt. So let's select these vertices here, like so. All right, so Alt S, let's bring that out. Something like that. And don't worry about this bit here. I'm just gonna select that one there and Alt S and bring it out a little bit. And the same for this one, Alt S. Holding down Shift to get finer control. What I think I'm gonna do also is select all of these. Now I could do this, but I'm not sure if I will actually. Um, this is okay, the spacing of that. And this bit here, let's select these th four vertices and with loop tools, we're going to do space. And that will space them out in a nice even fashion. So let's go back to object mode, turn off the wireframe and you can see we now have this much sharper edge going on there. Now, of course, we've lost this, um, this sharp, sharply defined edges because of our auto smooth well, smooth by angle modifier. I'm going to tap into edit mode and make sure that I actually add sharpness to these edges as well. So holding down shift there, control and click there. And this one as well. Let's add sharpness to these ones for now. And perhaps that one as well there. Maybe not. Let's do right click and mark sharp. Let's have a look at our handiwork. That's not too bad. Now you could go along and select these as well. But if I do right click, mark sharp, and now we have that as well. Now I don't actually mind that. That's not too bad. Um, feel free to do whatever you think looks good. Maybe make that one sharp as well. And while we're at it, let's do these as well. These edges down here. And probably you need to do these as well. So let's select them. Why don't I just hold down the Alt key and just click it? Oh my goodness me. Uh, so I'm going to mark these sharp as well. Just for completeness, right? That's looking pretty good. Let's fix this little um, glitch down here. Let's go to the front view. And let's turn on X-ray at the top there. Let's save now, um, control less, and switch to vertex mode. And I'm gonna select these two here. Or oh, you can drag and select, obviously. And I'm gonna press S for scale. And just keep scaling them until they cross over. I do say don't cross the streams, but in this instance, 
We need to do that, guys. Um, that will do. Turn X-ray off. And there you go. That bit is sorted. Now you could also go in here, actually, and create sharp edges on these as well. But that one there as well, and this one would be quite nice, as it will be here. And we've got a glitch there as well. Let's just mark these as sharp. And you can see that's working more nicely. And in fact, we could do these, but I'm actually going to add more geometry here. So I'm not going to do that just yet. Let's switch to the front view. X-ray back on again. Vertex mode, pressing 1 on your keyboard, not the numpad. Let's just fix these. So let's maybe grab that one, press G, G twice, and slide that down. Something like that. Perhaps bring that one out. Now, ideally, no, actually, let's leave that as is. It's fine. I mean, you could just do with a triangle there, to be honest. You don't really see that, that point there. So feel free to do that to optimize your model. And in the next stage, I'm going to refine these, some of these much more harsher angles. They're far too low poly for this kind of asset.